Hey, welcome everybody. It being 531, I want to welcome you to the March 18th uh, doubleheader meeting. Oops. Okay, and I'm not muted here. We have a doubleheader tonight. We're going to have first the uh, <clears throat> the meeting, the hearing for the state annual plan. And that will be followed by our regular monthly meeting just after. And I, I, I want to make sure we do have a quorum just to be able to go ahead and turn. And we do have a quorum. So thank you for being here. Um, as I said, we're going to have first the public hearing for the state annual plan. And that will be followed by our regular monthly meeting um, just after. So please, um, please take a both. Okay. And uh, with that being said, I'd like to turn it over to uh, Executive Director Leeper, who uh, typically uh, runs the uh, public hearing for the state annual plan. Over to you, please, Director Leeper. Thank you, Thank you Madam Chair. Um, this public hearing announcement, uh, it, the purpose of this public hearing, which was posted at the state properties um, management office and website on February 2nd, 2024, so as to provide the public ample opportunity to review the plans as they were being developed and to make suggestions to allow the Board of Commissioners to hear comments from interested parties about the annual plan. Meetings were also held with the residents at each state property. At Four Sander on February 22nd, we had nine residents and the Four Sander Tenants Association. The only substantive item brought up were the vent replacements, which are in the current plan of fiscal year 26 and window replacement, which is already in the plan as well in fiscal years 28 and 29. At Tobin Manor on 2-22-24, we had 11 residents in attendance. The only substantive item brought up was a, re a request for parking lot paving, which will be included in a future plan. At Hampshire Heights on 2 20 can you jack mute whoever's not muted? At, at Hampshire Heights on 2 20 24, we had five residents in attendance. The only substantive item brought up was a request for front and rear door replacement, which will be put on a future plan. At Cahill on February 21st, we had 10 residents in attendance. The only substantive item brought up uh, were having repaving of the walkways, which is already in the current plan of FY 25, and new cameras and intercoms, which will be placed on future plans. At Salvo, the meeting was held on 2-21-24. We had 35 residents and the newly recognized Walter Salvo Local Tenants Organization. The only substantive item brought up was replacement of the sliding glass doors and windows, sidewalk repairs, and tree trimming. These will all be placed on a future plan. The state annual plan is a DHCD template, which consists of the budget, which is previously approved by the board, maintenance policies, and our capital improvement plan. That being said, are there any public comments that I've not already stated from the resident meetings? I have a question, Carol. When you're when you're setting up the annual plan, do you have a certain percentage? Of um, of items that are that are based upon the people who are disabled, um, as far as the walkways and sidewalks and things like that are, is concerned, or is it just based upon need? Uh, uh, Commissioner Brooks, I just want to say, um, right now we're looking for any public comment for the annual plan. And then because we have this on our agenda, as commissioners, we will have the opportunity to ask questions for the director when it comes up, when it does come up on our agenda. Is that okay, Commissioner Brooks? Yeah, I, I, I guess I was asking as a tenant, but- Oh, know. please, I'm sorry that, I apologize. Go ahead, please. Yeah, so- I just wondered if 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 that is something that's taken into account when you're making up the annual plan. So the annual plan is driven by the pool of money, and um, typically we use um, similar to what's a, what is a capital needs assessment um, and the needs of the properties. Mr. Brooks, you're at a, a federal 
uh, property. So your plan is different than the plan we're talking about right. today. Yes. The plan we're talking about today is for a state plan. And your plan does actually oh, include- Yeah, I understand that, but I'm capital asking- Capital needs assessment. Asking, I'm asking for, for, for that as far as a state plan is concerned. Yeah, the state plan does not use an actual capital needs assessment taking into consideration the ADAs, um, but we do take into consideration the ADAs when we're looking at sidewalk repairs or or cutouts for uh, handicapped accessibility. Okay, all right. Thank you. Um, you're welcome. Um, and Mr. Kierdorf, you have your hand raised. Yes, thank you. Um, you're welcome. I, I am a, a resident at Four Sander. I'd like to thank you and Mr. Redman for coming and going through the, the plan with us last month. Uh, uh, but I just wanna point out and um, that the issue that was raised about ventilation in the apartments uh, is, is a bit more urgent than, than, uh, than you seem to think. Right now, there are two buildings in Four Sander in which the ventilation is not working at all. And there are several others where the ventilation, the, the ventilators are so noisy that they cannot be turned on, or if they are turned on, the vibrations are keeping people awake. Uh, this, there, have, there has to be functioning ventilation in the bathrooms according to the Massachusetts State Sanitary Code. Excuse me. I'm dealing with a cat here. This is, <laughs> uh, this is the Massachusetts Department of Public Health Minimum Standards of Fitness for Human Habitation State Sanitary Code Chapter yeah. 2. And yeah, it is... Under item 410.220, natural and mechanical ventilation. Habitable rooms and rooms with a toilet, bathroom, or shower shall have windows, skylights, or doors through the exterior walls or roofs that can be easily opened with a combined opening of at least 4% of the floor area of that habitable room or room containing a toilet, bathtub, or shower, or Two, mechanical ventilation capable of exhausting air to the outdoors. Since this is not the case now in at least two and probably more uh, buildings at Forsander, the owner, i.e. the housing authority, is at the moment in violation of the state sanitary code. These, uh, uh, this uh, property, the four sander was opened, I think in 1967 or 68, which means it is now 56 uh, or 57 years old. The ventilators were put in then, and they're all just shot. And this is probably partly due to the, the neglect of regular maintenance, maintenance over years or decades. But this situation is urgent. And since the owner, i.e. the housing authority is currently in violation of the Massachusetts State Sanitary Code. Okay, thank you, this Mr. Is a, this um, is a yes. matter, I have one more thing to say. In, the, in the, the budget that you outlined for us, you said that there, there is a, 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 uh, an item to take care of this in two years, in 2026. That's so as not, I as that, I explained, that's Mr. not good enough. As I explained, Mr. Kierdorf, at our individual meetings, the fiscal year budget of 2026 actually is. I, I know it says 2026, but that work begins um, a year before. So in July, that process will go out to bid. Um, the it's so it's on the plan for 2026, but it actually starts um, July 1st, and we're in talks with our construction advisor to get it out to bid before July 1st. Um, but I thank you for the comment, um, and it is already in the that's, plan. That's July 1st of this year. Correct. Okay. 
thanks for your time. Thank you. Looking, looking forward to the repairs being made soon. Thank you. Um, uh, Ms. Tarbutt in Springfield, you have your hand raised. Did you want to make a comment for the public hearing? Yeah, as a tenant, I'd like to make a comment. I'd like to think uh, regarding the uh, annual plan, I think it was really great that you went to all these uh, uh, properties and talk with folks. My, my, the thing that I am a little worried about is that uh, we're voting on it now and that happened a while back. I think we have what is a six, six week, six month window. And it seemed more like they were being told what was going on as part of being interactive and coming up with some of the decisions too. But it's a great start. And I think that, you know, in my 10 years, that's the absolute first time that that's ever happened. And the annual plan has been going on annually. So good start. Keep uh, doing that involving tenants. So, but um, I'll vote on that later. But I just wanted to say, I think it was a really good uh, thing to have that. I, I press for more stuff like that as well. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other uh, public comments for the state plan? Seeing and hearing none, I will now close the state annual plan public hearing and turn the meeting back over to the chairperson. Uh, there were two. There were two public comments. I will now close the state annual plan for public. Madam Chair, you're muted. You're muted. I guess so. I guess so. Okay. You're still muted. Try talking now, Maureen. Got it. See, I had to. I don't know why you can't. You just have to shut off the uh, audio on one of the devices. I have the audio shut off on my computer. You're good now. You're good perfect now. now. You're perfect okay. now. Sorry, everybody. That's the, and I need the two so that I can switch back and forth with the uh, documents. So I apologize. And again, I want to welcome everybody to the regular meeting now of the Northampton Housing Authority. Um, as you see, we have uh, we've already heard for, from members of the public here tonight, and and in addition to those that Director Leeper referenced at the various meetings that were held at the various properties. Um, and we'll, the, this board will take up the matter of the resolution, which is to approve the state annual plan later on in our agenda. At that point, members of the board will also present their questions to the director regarding the annual plan. And then we'll also, um, since the resolution will at that point have been uh, moved and seconded, we'll have a discussion. So I'll talk further about that when we get to it at the meeting. But at this point, as is our practice, I would like to um, ask the director first to call the roll. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Chairperson Carney. Present. Thank you. Vice Chairperson Cancel. Uh, I'm here. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Richards. You're muted. I, I see that you're here. Commissioner. Um, is it possible that Commissioner Richards is unable to unmute? I'm not sure, but I'm going to mark her as present because I can see her. Um, Commissioner Brooks? Here. Thank you. Commissioner Jones? Here. Thank you. Commissioner Tarbutton Springfield? I'm here, but isn't Commissioner Richards vice chair now, not <clears throat> Eduardo? Oh, yes, you're right. You're right. Thank you for that correction. Um, 
Commissioner Tarbutt in Springfield. Vice Chairperson Richards is here. Commissioner Cancella is also here. Okay. All right. And me. Oh, no. I did it. No. I'm here. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. I'm here for unmuting. Okay. We appreciate that. Okay. So, um, as is our practice, we open it now to public comment, but really it's a sectioned public comment where first we hear from residents, then from staff, and then from the general public. And typically, Jack helps us with this in terms of um, facilitating that process. So, I'm going to ask Jack, would you go ahead and start to call any residents who would like to make a comment? Absolutely. Thank you. Um, so just so everyone's joining, anyone joining for the first time, I will call you. You will have the ability to unmute yourself. Um, if you are a member of the public or staff, I will come back to you when the appropriate time um, comes. All residents and the public receive a two-minute time limit. I will do my best not to interrupt, but I will remind you when we get close to that two-minute mark. Um, and please, if you can let us know what building you are calling from and your full name for purposes of the minutes. Um, the first person on my list who has the ability to unmute themselves um, is named Angela Santanello. Hi there, this is Angela Santanello from the Walter Salvo building and um, I'm just observing the meeting today. Um, the only concern that I have is that it was brought to my attention on another board that we have a board member that's bullying people and that's not right. I think that something should be done about that, but I'm not sure exactly how the board goes about doing that. Um, I don't know if you can be censor censored as a commissioner or not, but I think it should be looked into if it's not already being looked into. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Santanello. And just before, just so that the public knows, um, we don't respond at this point or actually at all during our regular meeting. So don't think that we don't care, especially if there are resident concerns brought up. You will hear though how those are dealt with at the next meeting. Um, but we, uh, we do hear your concern and we're not just being rude by not responding. So, um, Back to you, Jack. Thank you. The next person who is on a, is able to unmute themselves is identified as AJ24. Would you let me know if you're a resident or not and if you have a comment this evening? I am just a member of the public. No comment at this time. Thank you so much. Um, the next person is Anna Gilbert. Are you a resident or a member of the public? And do you have a comment? A comment. I'm a resident of the Salvos house, but I have no comment. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Thank uh, the you. next person um, is Mr. Kierdoff. Would you like to make a comment during the resident section? No, that's okay. I've said my piece. Thanks. Thank, Thank you, you so Mr. Much. Um, The next person um, is Mayor. I will come back to you. Uh, and then I have Gwen Nabad. Um, yes, hello, my name is Gwen Nabod, and I'm calling from Hampshire Heights, and I am calling for the tip of the month for residents, which is um, a um, PHN that I found regarding rent. So if, if anyone that lives in public housing has been on disability in the last 12 months um, and they start working, um, they can. there is an income exclusion, and it's called a rent freeze. And so I wanted to just share this information that I discovered with public. Thank you. Thanks for that, Mr. Bod. Thank you. The next person I have is identified as just Heather. We also have a Heather that is a member of our staff. So if you are identified as just Heather and you wanna mute yourself and let us know if you're a member, a resident or a member of the public, Not hearing, I am going to move on to someone identified as Lily. We'll give Lily a second to respond. I don't have um, anyone. The next is 
Um, the next is Susan Riley, who is a member of our Hampshire County Properties. Um, Sue, would you like to make a comment this evening? Just a quickie. Um, it was announced in our um, weekly bulletin that we were going to have an exciting informational session and that it was important to come to this meeting. So I'm here representing the Tenants Council for Hillside Terrace. But I don't exactly know because the information wasn't posted about what exactly I'm supposed to be here for in terms of the exciting news. So thank you, Ms. Riley. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, going on, I have um, Council Person Moulton, which I will come back to. Um, why, Castillo, do you have a comment this evening? Not hearing any, I'm going to move on to Joella. Hello, everyone. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm putting on my residence hat here. I just also want to say that here in Savo, was it last week, last Thursday or Friday, there were bed bugs. Uh, well, I know uh, there was the exterminator who usually does a heat treatment for bed bugs. I believe it was on the third floor. And uh, there was some residents really anxiety producing to have that here, especially mm -hmm. after what has happened in this building for a long time. And uh, so I just remember I saw a resident and her dog downstairs. So I, I wasn't sure. I don't know who was who or what, but I know they came in probably the next uh, day. And I was told that it was probably on the fourth and fifth floors. And I just wanted to think about that because on the third floor, that's the laundry room. And if we can all remember when the bed bugs were here for, there was a letter, including from Brahman that says, we have to close on abundance of caution. We have to close all the bed bugs. And it's very interesting then because they were targeting I think maybe one or two or three people who were the cause of the laundry rooms not being open. But in this situation, and I don't know if it's been resolved, the laundry rooms were open. And I personally think they should have been open because that's one way of uh, dealing with the bed bugs. So I just thought that that was very interesting. And I just wanted to applaud that it was happened. It's seemingly more efficient than ever because one person, my someone across from me, it took them a month before they could even verify what the bed bugs were and this time I, I don't know the whole story. They went there and they said, "Yep, let's get to it." And I think that's the way it probably should be. My question is: I think that even if new people are coming in or whatever the case, I think we need to still have some training. I know the training and what they were came when the news coverage came, but I think that this should be happening property wide, where people know what they are, know what they look like, because so many people thought that they were fleas and all kinds of stuff other than what they were. And there's a wonderful video I've told people about the 23 minutes. I would think that it would be a really good thing if everybody could have that so they'd know what they're looking for. Um, as far as uh, bullying, <clears throat> I think that those are terms that people use all the time without tr uh, truly understanding exactly what they are. When you disagree with someone, uh, that's not bullying. And uh, it's interesting because think about the word gaslight. Gaslight came out in 1953 movie. They had the gas lights turn the light on. Man was turning, the woman was like, is it dark in here? And they were making her feel like she's crazy, changing what she's saying and turning around. And I think that that happens a lot and we need to understand what really constitutes bullying. Um, and I just wanna say, cause a lot of times what people are accusing people of, especially if it's involved me, you most likely you'll get silence from me, but my silence doesn't mean inactivity. It's just that I won't give it wing. And I just, someone sent me this from Texas today uh, said, dear God, fix me when I'm the problem and protect me when I'm not. So that's my saying to what people have to say. There is a method that we have to go through part of it. I was talking about with DEI training. I know with the Mel King, first thing they did with us was that we had a group on racism within our group. So these are the terms that we need to really understand what's going on and really think about who is the architect orchestrating all of this stuff between residents. And residents should be doing something that's unifying, not divisions, not tokens, not incentives, not $100 off or whatever the case may be. That breed- oh, you're just is, at over two minutes. And thank yeah. you, Jack. I appreciate that. But I'm just saying that's very important. Thank and you. So thank you, Ms. Tarbutton. Uh, and then there are two phone callers that have called in. Um, if you um, dial star six or star nine on your phone, you can unmute. Um, the first person ends in 5639. 
and the second ends in 7893. Um, feel free to unmute yourself. Again, that's star six or star nine, depending on your phone. We'll give you 10 seconds to see if you have a comment this evening. Just need to know if you're a resident or not. Um, and it looks like everyone is accounted for Chairperson Carney. Thank you, Jack. Can we please move to the next segments, which are first the staff, then, and you can move right into the public if you don't hear any staff. Thank Absolutely. You. So staff have the ability to unmute themselves. If anyone likes to make a, a, a staff comment this evening, I will give 20 seconds just to make sure. And not seeing any, I see that there are at least two members from the public. I am going to just jump back to um, the first that was unaccounted for um, was Lily. Just want to make sure, Lily, you're um, not looking to make a comment. And then I am going to go to Mayor next. Hi, I'm just happy to be with you all this evening and, you know, hear a little bit about the state annual plan and I don't have any comments. I'm just happy to, to listen and just be with you all. So thank you though. Thanks for the opportunity though, Jack. Appreciate it. Thank, thank thanks you. for coming, Madam Mayor. My pleasure. Uh, uh, Chairperson Carney, why Castillo, I believe is a uh, resident. I did call on them during the public comment time. Will you allow me I think to it's fine. Again? I think it's fine to go back since I see why Castillo um, has their hand raised. Perfect. So why Castillo, you can unmute yourself if you have a comment this evening. Just let us know if you are a resident or a member of the public. Can you hear me out? Yes. Okay, hi, I'm a member, uh, I live in, in public housing, and I just want to say a lot of people talking about the bullying thing, and some people might don't know what bullying is, but the victim of a bullying know what bullying is. So as one of them who is being harassed, antagonized, calling names, I'm pretty sure when I'm accusing somebody of bullying, I know exactly what I mean. So it's funny, like some people trying to say like, oh, like people don't know what bullying is and definition of what a bullying is. I know the definition of bullying. Uh, and it's funny how they try to like keep harassing the victim and try to minis minimize this. And then it's not cool, especially with some board member. So it should be repercussions to that because it's, it's not nice calling names people. It's not nice calling people a junkie. It's not nice talking about people's past. It, it, it's not nice at all when, when somebody should be lead by example. That's all what I need to say. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Steele. Uh, excuse me, a point of order, a, a resident for some reason can't get on and they want to make some comments and they're knocking at my door. So I, I, I'd i like for them to say whatever they have to say so I, they can get out of my place, if that's okay, Madam Chair. It's fine with me, please. We want every resident to have their time. So. <laughs> well, what you want? Okay. My name is Roy C. Martin, 81 Pound Street. Hi, Roy. Uh, <laughs> don't mind the no shirt. It was hot out there. So anyways, uh, you know, a lot of these things that I see coming up now, right, uh, along with the ventilation and stuff like that. Now, mine keeps going off in my bathroom and they come in and they spray the fan and then it works for a couple of days and then it's off and on and off and on. So anyways, right. But my apartment hasn't been had anything done in 20, 22 years I've been there. And not a thing has been done. The, the wallpaper's peeling off the wall. So uh, by the end of this week, my stuff will be all out of there so that if the maintenance wants to, you'll be able to come in and do something. Now, a lot of this stuff that I see coming up now that is on the plan, right, is stuff that has been the last 10 years. John Height had it on the plan. 
way back then, same things over and over, right? Always going to be done next year, but then all of a sudden something emergency comes up, right? Now, can't we get one thing done at a time? Yeah, right. Uh, you know, this is what all I'm asking is let's get one thing done at a time. All right. I've never seen outside there like that. Never seen it like that. Right. Leaves piled up all over the place and everything. It never was like that. Right. John Hyde did. Oh, he wouldn't allow that. You know, right. So, Kara. What is going on? I mean, if you want us to do it, ask us and we will get some rakes and rake it up. You know, right? As long as you guys will hollow leaves away. As long as this stuff is done by you guys, we'll help, right? There's a lot of us that will help. I mean, I'm fighting this cancer now and mm -hmm. who knows how long things are gonna be. You know, right? Yeah. If I got two years, if I got 10 years. But, uh, you know, hopefully I got more than two years, but we'll see what happens. And uh, and the other thing, right? Uh, Where you got 30 seconds. I just want 30 you to know. seconds. OK, 30 seconds. OK, in the next 30 seconds, Kara, right? We, we're counting on you to do things and do the right things. But I mean, you've been looking in the opposite directions right now, right? We love you, but, you know, hey, what can we do? All right, you're the leader. Lead us in a, some kind of direction. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Martin. And just a reminder to folks that we will get back at the next meeting with the various <laughs> resident concerns that were raised. Oh, everything's um, I'm sorry, Commissioner Tarbutton, are you asking another I, I've, question? I've muted her. Oh, oh okay, okay. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, everybody. I, I'm not sure if that's everyone. You, is there anyone else? Um, <laughs> no, no yeah? one um, there's one more we have um council person Moulton is also on I don't know if um, they would like to do a public comment this evening can you hear him Jack I'm very very faintly I think it was that they don't have a public comment this evening Thank you, Councillor Moulton, for uh, sitting in on our meeting. We really appreciate it. And um, Chairperson Carney, it looks like everyone is accounted for. Thank you. Again, we really appreciate folks coming and letting us know their thoughts, their concerns. As you know, we can't respond right now, especially to the, the direct questions that were asked, but you will hear at the next meeting um, as part of the executive director's report, the way that the management will deal with the particular resident concern or has dealt with the particular resident concerns. All right, so I think if we're that now that we're finished with the public comment, the next item on our agenda will be the executive director's report. And so for the public, I just want to explain as part of our process, we do ask the executive director as part of her contract to present a report and it's actually a report and those members of the public have questions about that report may direct them directly to uh, Director Leeper. That's three directors in one point in one sentence and I'll, I'll ask the same thing of commissioners as I have in the last uh, few months to please direct your questions to the director and um, I'll turn it over then, please, Director Leeper. Thank you. Uh, the Executive Director's Monthly Summary for March 2024, our GPR was $227,873.95, of which we collected $209,114.54, 92%. Total of recertifications for the current month, Section 8 had 59, public housing had none recertified 58, one outstanding due to um, timing of paperwork. Wait list, one bedroom, federal applicants, 96, two bedroom, 34, three bedroom, 23, four bedroom, two, section eight has 58. State applicants, family has 19,381, 
elderly disabled has 4,923. Public housing had four move outs, section eight had two. Uh, public housing had six move-ins, section eight had four, and public housing has two units on notice. End of month vacant ready is one. End of month vacant unready is four for a total of five vacants, four of which are pre-leased. We completed seven make readies throughout the month, all of which were rehab, complete rehabs. We took in 178 work orders. Um, we started the month with 58 outstanding. We completed 179 work orders and we currently have 58 that we're working on. Um, last, the only uh, follow-up uh, necessary was last month, a commissioner asked when the Walter Salvo local tenant organization would be funded. And I'm happy to respond that on March 15th, I met with the president of the Walter Salvo local tenants organization. Um, we had a really great uh, positive meeting. Um, I gave them official recognition and funding for the LTO to begin um, their processes. Um, updates and events. I'm uh, super excited to say that the legislation finally went through for the Hampshire County Regional Housing Authority. As you all know, it's been on the process in the process since April 10th of 2023. And it was finally officially signed by the governor on February 29th, 2024. The board dissolution has occurred, and now with full ownership, our team has been diligently <clears throat> and tirelessly completing all of the necessary requirements, such as banking changes, deeds, leasing, and so on. There's currently an opportunity for residents and employees of the Housing Authority to apply for the Jack McGrady Scholarship. The scholarship is in the amount of $500. All resident households received a packet with the application and instructions on how to apply. We wish all of our residents and employees good luck um, in receiving one of these scholarships. So ends the executive director report. Thank you, Director Leeper. <clears throat> and as I noted previously, um, any residents with concerns or questions for the director, please uh, email the director. And same for those commissioners. And I'm going to move to the next item on the agenda. Point of information. Yes, please. Uh, maybe this is direct uh, at um, uh, 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 Executive Director Leeper. Are, 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 is your uh, executive uh, report not in our packet anymore? Because I didn't see it at all. And actually, I... It's never been in the packet because I'm oftentimes still preparing it up to right before the meeting. May I ask a quick question about the scholarship form? I'm so sorry, Ms. Nabod, but now that we're in the regular portion of the meeting, we can't, we're unable to do any kind of question and answer. However, please direct your question regarding the scholarship to Carol Lipa, and I'm sure that Director Lipo would be happy to answer your question. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so as I said, we're moving forward now into the approval of the G February, which is our last month's meeting. So before I ask the commissioners if they have any additions, corrections, or deletions, I'd like to ask, is there a motion from the floor so that we may discuss this? Motion to approve the February 2024 minutes. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you. So moved and seconded by Commissioner Brooks, Commissioner Richards to approve the February 2024 regular meeting minutes. I'll ask then please from the floor, are there any additions, corrections or deletions? Questions. Yes. Uh, quite, well, uh, questions, uh, rather than questions about the minutes, I'd ask if there is something that you have, a, um, is there an addition or a correction that you'd like to offer? Well, uh, or a deletion. Well, Take your time. my only question, I don't know if it was answered last meeting is that, uh, I know people were saying that they were not putting residents' names because 
of some some training we got. I remember that training a year and a half ago, but up until what last month they were there. So my uh, and I and I get that, but I think that it is uh, very difficult for people to know what was said, not the way it is structured right now. And I thought, at least from me trying to find something, I think in the December meeting that they were also going to be numbered, so we can go to the page in there. But I guess. Um, I, I I don't if you don't put the names, why is it that you can't either put their initials or um it's just so just so we go back to remind we, again, um we talked about this at length at the last meeting. Yours was a two-part question. One was asking, number one, why are we now not using the names? And I think that question was answered for you. And then there was an additional part of that question, which is more like why now and not earlier or something we, that you withdrew that part of the question. So I think that you wanna ask further whether instead of what was advised by NARO and explained at the last meeting, which is to just put the name of the property from which the resident um, comes and list that person as Salvo House resident, for example, for Sander resident, which was advised to us by NARO. I think you're asking, and and this again goes to policy and not really something. Is you're asking whether instead of doing what was advised, which is to just list the property name and the resident, why no. we may not. No. Oh, me. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, and the reason why I'm saying this, I know that, and this is my point. I know that there's discussion, but it's very difficult to see exactly what's decided on it. So you're right, it did go back and forth. But I was just wondering if that was an option um, because it had been going on a year after you and I went through that train. Not Naira, was a Naira trainer. And, uh, and then he came back most recently. So it went on with a year. And I remember particularly asking about it when some, you know, a, a resident name was mentioned like guys. And I was like, am I the only one that heard that? So I remember that my question is, I think this is a little <clears throat> monotonous reading it, but maybe, when we're making some of the comments, we can uh, highlight names or salvo so your eye can go to it. So it's just like, instead of one big paragraph, that it's, it's something that's at least putting it where you can see it. Like if someone's talking, how about bold in the name? Is commissioner saying something bold that, or salvo residents, bold that. So it's not just one page of stuff. And the only other thing is I suggest residents, email yourself the questions that you're gonna answer so you can make sure you know what you're saying and that it's, um, it's, it's, communicated effectively as you would like, because I've had to make a lot of corrections. Thank you, Commissioner Tarbutton. Thank then you. I'll ask, I'll ask again, is there any commissioner who would like to offer any addition, correction or deletion of the minutes? Okay, hearing none, I'll ask then the secretary to please call the roll. Yes, um, approval of the February 2024 regular meeting minutes. Chairperson Carney. Yes. Thank you. Vice Chairperson Richards. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Cancel. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Tarbutton Springfield. She's muted. Commissioner Tarbot. Well, actually, I said, actually, yes, I do uh, a vote for this with the, uh, I don't know how we'll do it with asking if the names can be in bold for those who speak. So that was a yes, Matt, um, Commissioner Tarbot. Very Springfield. much indeed. Thank you. Commissioner Brooks. Yes. Thank you. Madam Chair, um, six yeas. Well, that being unanimous, that motion carries. Thank you, everybody. And to Commissioner Tarbutton's point, I think that we can certainly ask for clarification from NARO regarding the particular um, uh, suggestions regarding bolding or highlighting and ways to make that a little bit easier. And I would ask then the commissioner to please just, if you don't mind, just typing up that, that question so that we can run that by NARO and see if, or anyone else who might be able to better um, uh, answer that question for you. Would that be helpful? 
Well, actually, I'm a little confused with this because these messages are recorded with CC. So I feel like when I ask a question about something, you say, well, it's in the notes, look at the uh, video. But when it's something that I'm asking is like, well, you write it up. Not that I have a problem with that, but I'm like, we got a recording secretary. I'm happy. I'm happy to write up the question. I'll Thank listen you. again to the tape. I'll listen it. again to the tape and I'll seek some clarification for you. So you. sorry about that. Okay. Um, so I think that we're ready then to move on to the new business, if I'm, or the unfinished business. So we had some unfinished business and that was regarding the January 2024 minutes. There was a request that we continue this item. I think, oh yeah, I think it was Commissioner Tarbutton had a correction and she wanted to take the month to try to put that together. So I'll ask them um, first before we have any discussion, is there a motion to put on the floor, which would be a move motion to approve the January 2024 regular meetings? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Second. Move. Okay, moved and seconded. Commissioner Richards and seconded Commissioner Brooks. Okay, so now we're on the floor for discussion. And I'm going to turn it over to Commissioner Tarbutton. She had some um, corrections to make regarding her own comments in the resident comment portion. Commissioner Tarbutton, do you have that written? We, I think we, you said that you were going to provide for us something that we could yeah. screen share or something? Oh, I didn't say screen share. But actually, it was from the December meetings because in January. I was no, no, that's the next. Um, so I didn't. I didn't vote on it because I didn't see the corrections yet. It was in the December, it was postponed and that the meeting, it would be corrected. I see that the December meeting, it is corrected. And therefore I have the January meeting. If we wanted to vote on that, I would vote for that. But it was because I didn't want to say, okay, I'll wait till you correct it. I wanted to see the corrections that you were making. And uh, so the, the, to me, one and the same yet, uh, yet different. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I might have this wrong, but it's my recollection that at the last meeting, you wanted to offer a correction to the comment that you made under resident comment that you felt that did not accurately reflect. And you suggested to the board that you would submit for us to review basically that correction that you'd like to, that you'd like us to, to actually, we're just going to substitute it. So, we're happy to hear that well, correction now. It was oh, about oh, your oh, resident comment. Yeah, you remember yeah. now. Well, w what I wrote, and it's on, uh, it's not on a page. Again, I one of the things I wanted to rectify is that we could put a page on this. So it would be easier to find. Um, uh, I just, you know, you I said, thank you. I'm sorry, did you say that you did not write up that the actual correction as you would like us to consider? Well, the thing is, I was going to read it, but as far as I'm saying, I understand when you're having these meetings, I mean, that when you're uh, uh, writing these uh, notes up, it's not verbatim, and it is the gist of it. So I think from what I've read, um, uh, pretty much, yeah, I would have it worded down, but it, for the gist of it, I think that that's, that's, that's fine. I just wanted to... Um, I was more concerned about the December resident uh, December meeting, and that I just wanted these to be numbered. Okay, thank you. It was so, December uh, that I was going to rewrite, and I said, "Can't you look in it?" Just like I asked you now. Okay, uh, well, I guess I'll ask then because it sounds like Commissioner Tarbutton is fine with the um, with the way that the resident comment was uh, written. So I'll ask then: Are there, are there any other additions, corrections, or deletions? than those that we considered at the last meeting? Hey. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, Somebody, somebody's making one. Yeah. Oh, I, I'm sorry, I thought I heard somebody speaking up. My bad. Um, I'll ask then the director, uh, would you please call the roll for the approval of the January 2024 meeting, meeting minutes? Yes. Approval of the January 2024 regular meeting minutes. Chairperson Carney. Yes. Thank you. Um, Vice Chairperson Richards. Approve. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Kensell. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Tarbutton Springfield. 
Yes, with the corrections from the December meeting, even though it's in December, I will say yes to this because there was correction, but I wish that there was a reference to that. See December notes as well. But as far as accuracy, that was the. I think we'll hear that. This is yeah. only on the January minutes. We're, yeah, we're talking about the January minute meetings, but I think I understand Commissioner Tarbutton is saying yes, and she will speak again when we take up the December meetings that are coming up under new business. Okay. Am I correct? Is that a yes, Commissioner Tarbutton? I did say yes because of the correction. I know you said yes. Sure. Okay. So, and we'll forget about the but for now because we'll be take that up at the December meeting. All okay. right. Commissioner Jones? Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Brooks? Yes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Six yes. Okay. That being unanimous, that motion carries. And another set of minutes, folks. And I'll uh, first ask, is there a motion to accept the revisions to the approved December minute, minutes? Um, and that's so that we can discuss it. I'll ask if someone would please put that on the floor in that way to accept the revisions to the approved December 2023 minutes. Is there a motion to approve? Motion to approve the 2023 minutes, December meeting minutes. Is there okay. a second? Okay, thank you, Commissioner Can uh, Commissioner Brooks, and seconded Commissioner Cancel. So I think that this might take a little bit of explanation. Director Lieber, would you like to put this into context for folks? Yes. Um, so our uh, the person that does the transcription for us takes the meeting, the Zoom meeting, and the actual transcription. Um, they open the prior month's document and then they begin typing. Um, and uh, Commissioner Cancel had uh, found some typos um, uh, to the posted one to the internet. And when we got to looking at it, uh, it, it appeared that there were multiple um, things that didn't belong there. So Jack and I uh, reviewed the Zoom meeting and the minutes, and it turned out that she did the December minutes, but she didn't delete the remaining minutes from the prior month. Um, and so in addition to that, um, I don't know if you recall, but um, uh, Commissioner, Resident Commissioner Tarbutt in Springfield, as a resident, made a comment that she stated that she had a written statement. Um, and um, Commissioner Jones, um, I believe, thought that it was a written statement of a, a commissioner statement. Um, and she was asked to provide that uh, by the board to us. Um, and when we didn't get it, what I did was, is I took it from the transcript and I copied exactly what it said and noted the time that it started and the time that it stopped. And I put it at the bottom of the minutes. Um, uh, and so these are uh, now complete and accurate. Um, and so thank you, Commissioner Cancel, for bringing that um, to our attention. Thank you. And uh, I'll ask then, are there some additions, corrections, or deletions beyond the revisions that are stated here? And I see Commissioner Tarbutton. Yes. Yes. Um, let me just clarify. Um, when I was in Texas, I had a, a thing I wrote on. I went to go look for what my comments were. They're not there. It's still down there. I leave things down there. So it wasn't hard. It was hard for me to recreate. And I remember saying, can't you go in the transcript? Just what I said earlier, you've done this before. So that's why it's not like I just didn't do it. It was that it was somewhere else. I wrote those out while I was in Texas. And so it was hard to recreate, especially when I know that, that these meetings are CC, you know, uh, closed caption and written down. And um, the reason that I'm having a little bit of the confusion now is that I didn't have this in my packet. When I got my packet, some of these things weren't here. And I think I remember somebody else said that they got things and it wasn't in there now. So me seeing everything in its totality, it looks right. So my question was, that, and me, I'm not voting on anything that I'm not sure about. It doesn't make any sense. It was like, oh, the corrections were made. Well, I wanted to see it. And I wanted to see everything in front of me. So, but my question regarding this, I don't know, guys. I just, uh, I feel like sometimes these notes, I sound like a female, step it and fetch it. So like, for example, at the bottom part, I wish that these would be where you said, here's the recording. So it's not, 
out of disorder. I wish you would put them and say, these are the things she wrote about, not on the last page. But I know I didn't say I type up something. So um 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 it's emotional. I yeah 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 yeah. I hope I know I don't talk. I know I didn't say that. That's what you have written there. Uh, I, I I I how many eyes are the four or five? I didn't say that. Um so I and then I said uh on the second paragraph, bed bugs have been around for some time before this administration and will return. So let's get so let's get so let's get effective measures in place. So let's get so let's get that, that that's one thing. Um so yeah, my I get really nervous about this because some of the things that the uh, executive director just mentioned about oh there was a little thing mixed up. I remember like deja vu that it happened with an annual plan like December the last year was put on this year and I we thank goodness for uh, Commissioner Cancel for that catch. But there are a couple of things that are being caught that I worry about. Especially we have a recording secretary. I don't know. I didn't know much about the transcriptionist, but. Do we need to do that every time, like have two people, one look and one do this so we can make sure we get accuracy in reporting? Again, I'm not saying be verbatim. I'm just saying let's get the gist of the information correctly. Okay, so uh, uh, would you like to offer any addition, correction or deletion beyond the statement that you've just made? Yes, I just said on the second paragraph. Yes, okay. And I just said, take that and put it where it says, and she read the following, not on the very last page somewhere because they came together. It was a, it was a consistency in thought. So let's please have that. And in the first paragraph, it says, and I did say, I typed up something. So, um, 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 I don't, that it's emotional. I, 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 there's five eyes. I know I didn't say that. Uh, that could be taken out. And then on the second uh, paragraph where it says this administration will return, okay. Bed bugs have been around for some time before this administration and will return unless, uh, so, uh, if, uh, unless there are effective measures in place. I'm sorry, Dir uh, Director, uh, Secretary Leeper, did you get all that as the correction? That so, the commissioner so Madam Chair, on the last page, that mm -hmm. is an exact from the, the, the recording, on uh, Northampton Open Media, all I did was pull up the transcription and I copied and pasted it. So that's exactly verbatim what was said. Okay, well, let me, let me ask before I go back to Commissioner Tarbutton. Is it possible to remove the things that sound like stuttering, for example, that are uh, just a, a matter of the transcription? You know, sometimes there's a little, uh, you know, some sort of I don't know, something with the transcription where clearly, you know, somebody isn't saying I, 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 or if they were, we know that they only meant one I. Would it be possible then, I think to, uh, I'll ask then if we can make that correction to remove the two or three additional I's that the transcription showed. And uh, I think that's, that's one correction. And, and, uh, and actually, and the other, the other correction I'm, I'm at, or, I'm asking is, or I hear Commissioner Tarbutton asking, is it possible rather than having that at the end, is it possible that we insert that into the particular area where it did in fact occur in the meeting? Is that possible? Well, um, it is possible. I guess my question to the commission uh, commissioners was, um, Commissioner Jones thought that it was a statement as a commissioner, not a statement as a resident. And so when we had the discussion originally, it was that it uh, would be added to the end as an attachment. Um, that's why I put it on the end because it was supposed to be an attachment. Oh yeah, I totally understand why I don't you're doing it. But, I, but I, I'm hold happy- on one one, Hold on one sec. But I I'm totally happy to understand. do whatever you want. Yeah, yeah, I'm just gonna ask then, I'm gonna, because we have this, there's a, there's been a correction offered by Commissioner Tarbutton, yep. one which is to remove the extraneous eyes in the and, transcription, and the other and the, is to um, order, but and the other is to the order. And then I want to ask then before we move on, is there like for example, is there another commissioner that Commissioner Jones that put? Is there something you'd like to? Are you okay with that, or is that something that? I would go either way. I mean. Um, I would like to continue the meeting. 
um, okay. and I think this is a rather small item and I just felt it was important for the commissioner to have her comments as part of the minutes and this seems to do it. So it, one place or the other does not matter to me. Okay, so maybe I will ask then there've been, there been a couple of corrections offered by Commissioner Tarbutton and I'll ask if there is anyone who would like to discuss those particular corrections and we can talk about them further. Commissioner Jones has said he's fine with it, but I'd like hearing to move on. Yeah. Okay, hearing no objections, I'll ask then uh, the secretary to uh, call the roll for the, uh, the accept accepting those revisions that were previously noted and offered in addition to the ones that Commissioner Carbutton has asked for tonight. Okay. And hearing no objection, I'll ask if the secretary will please call the roll. Certainly. Accept revisions to the approved December 2023 minutes. Chairperson Carney. Yes. Thank you. Vice Chairperson Richards. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Cancel. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Brooks. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Tarbutton Springfield. I'm not exactly sure what has happened here. So I'm going to abstain just because it's not clear. And you're right. Don't want to go through all, all, all this for a while. Just. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, five yeas and one abstention. Thank you. That being a five to five vote and one abstention, that motion carries. Thank you, everybody. I can't believe this is bringing us to the last item on the agenda, but we know that this is a meeting one. So before we open this for discussion, I'll ask if there is someone who would please place the resolution for the 2024-02 approval of the fiscal year 25 state annual plan. Is there a motion from the floor to approve? Motion to approve. Is second. there a second? Okay, moved and seconded Commissioner Richards, Commissioner Jones, and now we're open for discussion. Yes, Commissioner Tarbell. Oh God, me and my questions. Okay, with the annual plan, as I mentioned, when I spoke as a resident, I thought that this was really a wonderful step having all the uh, meetings with all the schools and thanks for the clarification in particular with state and federal properties. No matter how many times I hear it, I learn something new every time. Uh, my question is, is that, and it was good. I got, I don't know what letter that was. I think it was a letter. I thought it was executive director of the court, but uh, we talked about it. They hosted meetings at all the state properties, uh, notified residents a month before the meeting in the newsletter. That's true. The invitation sent to every door. That's true. And then there was a robocall. call. So that was a real concerted effort to get people involved. The thing is, um, I think the reason why I'm abstaining from this is that Annual means every year. And this is the first time in 10 years since I've been here that this has happened to this degree. And the importance that's put on this, I think that is wonderful. I just, because that is just not doing it now, that's my only hesitancy. And I guess the other question I had was, isn't it also supposed to be in a publicized newsletter or newspaper? Um, because I know last year when people had talked about what paper was in. So my question, is the newsletter that we have sufficient? for the notification as to post to be a public notice in a newspaper. Okay, I hear that is a question for Director Lieber and I'll turn to, what, do you have an answer for Commissioner Tarbutton? So the, um, the, the state annual plan is not required to be put in the paper. It's the federal annual plan that's required to be put in the newspaper. Nothing else? I think I answered the question. Did no, I, I, I meant, I, I just, I, I, I'll ask uh, Commissioner Tarbutton, is there, is that satisfy your question? Yeah, but my question also, well, thanks for that. The question was, are you, the measures that you went through now, is that something that is required um, for all residents to, uh, to be a participate in it? And uh, why just a month beforehand, when I think these things start coming up like in six months process, to gather more input and a uh, request, I guess, lack of a better word, for their input in the annual plan. 
the things so that we did, did you have, okay i'll turn it to you the, the things that we did um this year uh to further engage residents um in the process was um based upon the board asking us to have more resident engagement in the plan and in the process and so um you know we made a consent you know a, a consent a, a, a centered effort to get residents you know usually we have four or five residents that come out um we brought food and snacks we offered food and snacks so that um residents would actually come um you know the board asked us to make sure more people came and we had a total of 70 people come um so you know the board asked us to do something and we did it and so this particular hold on this particular part is not required what's required is that we post it on the website put it in the office do all the things that we always do um but we did these extra steps because the board asked us to get more resonant input on it may i please just clarify them i hear yes. you saying that um there's not a requirement to do all that we have done and instead but we did hear concerns of commissioners at the last annual meeting. I remember myself thinking, we're going to do everything we can to see that there is satisfaction among commissioners, especially regarding the outreach to residents and the involvement, even though it's not required by the state. Am I correct yes. in that? Okay, thank you. Yes. Commissioner, yes. somebody else has their hand, I saw. And I... Um, oh, Commissioner Richards, please. Uh, yes, I, I want to um, join Joella into uh, thanking Kara and the rest of the folks there for making this extra effort. I think it was well worth it. And I think 70 people, that's amazing. And I'm, I'm really happy that that has happened, along with some local tenant associations being formed. So uh, thank you. Thank you for your efforts. Thanks, Commissioner Richards. I'd like to um, just, if, if folks don't mind, I'm going to kind of call you out. Oh, I don't even have to. Commissioner Cantel has raised his hand. Yes, Commissioner Cantel. Uh, yeah, I just I want to echo what others have uh, said about the outreach um, for the state annual plan. Um, I, I'm I'm really enjoying um, a lot of the good positive uh, forward movement from our agency as a whole, from the board, all the trainings that we've been getting from the staff, all the hard work they're doing, um, and in particular in uh, in reaching out to tenants and hearing uh, uh, folks out. Um, this is really what it should look like. It makes me really happy. Another thing that made me really happy was to see that we've been working on the mitigation for the basements at the, at the Hampshire mm. Heights. Um, oh. Uh, property and it's and it's really uh, great to see that it's it's and we're getting we're almost there we're getting there to you know fix those roads and 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 the mitigation with the basement which was all lumped into uh, one big project and so I just want to uh, acknowledge that and uh, it's just really exciting so thank you Kara thank you everybody thank you Commissioner Cancel and before I go back to Commissioner Tarbutton I'm going to call out a. Uh, Commissioner Brooks or Commissioner Jones, just in case you may have any uh, things that you'd like to highlight or questions you'd like to ask about the annual plan, as you see it. No, um, I think I asked mine. Oh, that's right, Commissioner Brooks. Sorry, you did ask that. And I appreciate that. Get that get answered, Jim? Pardon me? Did that question get answered that you had? Yeah, it was, it was answered. Okay. Yeah. No, the... Um, the survey in the back of the report, mm -hmm. was that composed of only um, state uh, housing tenants and not the federal folks? Correct. And how was that administered? The state sends those uh, surveys out to the residents and then they compile, uh, they send a self-addressed stamped envelope with the survey um, to the resident's address and um, they take the data that they receive back and they uh, put the information together and then we get the final results. So do we know the participation rate from those folks? Um, let's see here. 
um, this particular report was for um, the six, the chapter six, six, seven housing. Um, they sent out 200 um, surveys and they received 70 back. So these percentages are based on receiving 70 uh, responses. That's 30%. Okay, um, so which is, yeah. I could follow up. Um, there are, of course, different ways to measure the effectiveness of surveys and the questions, um, as I read through it, um, seemed fine. It'd be interesting to see how they were actually measured. But <clears throat> um, if you look at the very last question in the survey, um, it, basically a general question, are you satisfied with your living arrangement or something to that effect? Um, if you add those two numbers, A and B, or one and two, whatever it is, it comes to 77% that are satisfied. And we should never be um, satisfied with just 77%, but I thought that was an interesting number uh, to bring forth with all the stuff that we have to do on a monthly basis as a board. So mm -hmm. thank you for that. Thanks, Commissioner Jones. Um, before I go back to uh, Commissioner uh, Tarbutton and then Commissioner Richards, um, well, I'll just go back to Commissioner Tarbutton first and then Commissioner Richards. Okay, I know I keep saying six months, but here is from the Mel King Institute that they had for, uh, what is it called? In the board member training resource binder. And it says the annual plan and uh, it says that, uh, that, you know, to get this for greater transparency about the LHA operations and the, the general public have a right to participate in annual planning. And as I told you, they have, I can't see it, six months, what happens, six months is begin drafting it, five months, post initial draft of plan and shares with LTO, four months, LTO meets with, uh, LHA meets with LTO to hear about the plan. So I was just saying there is a process that I remember when I went through the uh, training that uh, this happens. And I, it does not, as I looked again, it does not say that you are required to uh, post it. I also just want people to remember, uh, for me to go on a website and look at something that's quite easy, and I'm not putting anybody down for their skills, but I'm also thinking about the average resident and many of them from what I can understand and talk with folks, surfing uh, the web and even the website for information. Uh, some have some difficulties with that. So I just think, the newsletter is well put. I think that was a great option to, to do that. But I was going by a plan. If people want a copy of this, I'd be more than happy to give it to folks. But I like that standard. And I want to just echo what uh, Commissioner Cancel said about how this was done uh, this year. I uh, And it was really great. And I will applaud us on that step. I just don't remember. I know the board talked about it. I just didn't remember seeing it in a motion. So what, you know, I, good. That this has happened, I just didn't see it in a motion. Not that it needed to be in a motion, but good first steps. Thank you, Commissioner Tarabutton. Commissioner Richards. Uh, yes, I, I did have a couple of questions. Uh, one in uh, uh, Jeff or Commissioner Jones referred to the survey, and uh, we have quite a few residents that have been uh residents in a housing authority property for over 10 years i wonder you know is there a benchmark for that how do we stack up against other housing authorities on the length of time residents are in uh our public housing i could um there's another uh as part of the pmr there's another there's a graph that we kind of get I'd be happy to look at that graph because it does a comparison, our housing authority against, you know, other housing authorities, our size, and right. then a, a, across the whole state. So I don't know that off the top of my head, but I'm happy. Yeah, to get I mean, I can get back to you. I just thought when I read it, it was interesting. Yeah. Uh, not unlike Commissioner Jones, I was pleased with some of the uh, percentages uh, that we saw. Uh, on the survey. Um, on the other hand, let me ask about, um, so it's looking at some of the PMRs. When does a uh, issue become, uh, uh, emergent become an emergency? As we heard tonight, a uh, resident talk about what he perceived as, as 
an emergency. So how does that move up? So for example, um, we were getting um, a lot of uh, no heat calls and no hot water calls over at Cahill. Um, and before I applied for the grant for the mini splits and the heating uh, program, um, we had it in the capital. We had it in the annual plan uh, for Cahill to get that. And we had to move that um, right up to the top because the systems were going down every yeah. single day. Residents weren't having heat. They weren't having hot water. Um, it's a very costly project. Um, and so we moved it up and uh, we had to move it up because the residents didn't have heat and hot water. Um, we were having to provide them with alternate places to shower. Um, we were having to provide them with plug in, um, uh, you know, heat source. It was just a, a terrible, terrible situation to be having elderly disabled residents in, in that, you know, plight. Um, and so those are the kinds of things that would be an urgent situation that would move something up on the list. And, and that was very costly. And so not only did it um, have to be moved up on the list, but it had to, it caused many items to move down on the list that were slated for, you know, um, for, for that time period. Um, you know, the, the good thing is, is that in applying for the grant funds, um, you know, we've been able to recoup some of that money. So I think that it'll give us a little bit more wiggle room. Um, hence why I'm going to be able to do something sooner, um, you know, like the fan, starting that fan project faster. Terrific. Thank you. Uh, just one last thing. I just want to say I agree with Commissioner Cancel. I'm very excited to get the Hampshire uh, Heights project going and finished and Underwood. Us too. Us too. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And before I go, uh, all right. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Commissioner Tarbutton, please again. Yes. I just wanted to say, um, it's just been such a lot of good stuff going on. I just want to echo on it is that, um, you know, uh, again, so far so good with uh, what happened this year. I want to keep it going on. My question is, I am involved with lots of surveys. In the 10 years that I've been here, I've never had one survey. I get surveys from every political party, every this, every that. But why do I not get surveys from formerly DHCD? So my question is, I mean, if it's, ra it's random, I, I just don't understand. You would think at least one time in the 10 years that I've been here. Uh, and I think maybe we need to get surveys from other uh other agencies concerned about what's going on, maybe not the same survey, but that would give a, a list. And I think that, I think it was Commissioner uh, uh, Jones who said, um, you know, uh, I, I, you know, input 70% is good, but when do they have a, a chance to do that? Um, and correctly, I think surveys are easy, service monkey, survey monkey, and they're easy to do a survey. And uh, it would be really nice to get feedback from folks. Thank you, Commissioner Tarbutton. So, I, um, and before I just ask a couple of questions, I do want to note that we heard some great comments from commissioners, some great suggestions. I mean, I don't, it, it wouldn't hurt to go ahead and post in the newspaper if folks, it seems like there's, if there's a uh, general consensus that folks would like to ask for that. I don't see any harm in going ahead and doing that. And before I ask whether we can look into why Commissioner Resident uh, Tarbutton has not received any surveys that are distributed by EOHLC, formerly DHCD, uh, could, could there be something, reason? Uh, do they send those via email to the, to the residents or how does the state distribute those surveys that they do at every housing authority? They, the they, 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 they mail them um, with a self-addressed stamped envelope to the mailing address. Is so it possible that there's some reason that Commissioner Tarbutton hasn't received that mail? I, I have no idea. It doesn't involve okay. us on any level. We we don't, we're not even told when it happens. We just get the results when it's over. I see. That's helpful to know. So I, I don't know, Commissioner Tarbutton, maybe we can look into, maybe we can ask a question at DHCD and see if they maybe have the address wrong for you on file or something like that. I don't mean to yeah. DHCD. So, yes, uh, I only know we'll one tenant that that has it. I've only known one tenant because you know I've asked around. Only one tenant that I know who got exactly what um, ED said only one in all the 10 years I've been here. But we do and have the do results that show that we yeah. do have the 200 responses. 
we do have the 200 responses that we looked at. So you just may not know those other 198 people. In this building? Uh, Director Leeper? Were there, is that it's, for it, all? It's based, on the pro, it's based on the program. So for right. example, if it's a 667 program that they're evaluating, you know, they, they don't do each program every year. So for the 200 program, they might, you know, they might do the 667 program one year, then the next year they do the 200 program, then the next year they would do a different program. So they don't do every program every year and that's up to them. Okay, but it does seem odd that Commissioner Tarbutton has never received a survey in her 10 years here. And maybe we could just, you know, we could just a little bug in EOHLC's ear and say that we heard from a resident commissioner that she has never, ever received. They could actually look and see whether it was mailed, I'm sure. And then we have to figure out what's going wrong with the mail. But before I do that, oh, I, and I had one other question then. So, uh, and I know that um, in some of our conversations, I know that uh, there was some indication that um, the comments, the resident comments were very helpful, of course, and actually able to be integrated into this plan. Could you tell us a little more about that, Director Lieber? Yes, um, we actually, you know, being in this business for so many years, it's kind of embarrassing to say how many years, uh, especially collectively, Jack, uh, Sharon and I and Tom have all been in this business <laughs> for a very long time. Um, and so- Come on. Yeah, uh, and so, um, you know, and, and whenever you go to a property, you, you know, try to take off the, the blinders so that you can still see all of the things that need to be done on a daily basis. Um, and, um, you know, it was like, for example, at Salvo, you know, I had, when I first started there and I had the interview with the hiring committee, I had said, wow, you know, they're that building needs a power wash and they really could use, you know, windows and sliders. And, um, you know, in the, in the um, process of being here, I'm getting ready to start my 10th year. Um, you know, I got the power washing done, but I had forgotten about the sliders and the windows. And it, it was great because a resident at the Salvo meeting brought that up. You know, you're putting these mini splits in, but, you know, the sliders and the windows are very drafty. And, I was like, oh, thank you so much for bringing that up because I had forgotten about that. And um, and so that was, you know, that was great input. Um, it was great input um, when I met with uh, the LTO um, about, you know, the the concerns with the, some of the areas of the sidewalk and, you know, some of the, you know, areas where they were concerned with some Widowmaker stuff. That wasn't really annual plan stuff, but it was just, it was good. I think good communication. Um, it was, uh, you know, it was a good time. You're muted, uh, Chairperson Carney. Sorry about that. Thank you, Director Leeper, and uh, I, I agree. I think that, um, and I don't think we'll you'd hear any disagreement from this board that communication is key, and that to the extent that we can hear what resident concerns are, and then have the opportunity to integrate those into our state plan or our federal plan, then you know that only makes us all better and helps us meet the needs of residents. So I really appreciate your um, listening and integrating those pieces into the annual plan. My pleasure. I'm going to ask other commissioners if they have any other uh, deliberation or discussion about this. Then I'll ask please the secretary to call the roll. Yes, um, Madam Chair, on resolution 2024-02, approval of the fiscal year 2025 state annual plan. Chairperson Carney. Yes. Thank you. Um, Vice Chairperson Richards. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Cancel. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Tarbutton Springfield. I'm going to pass, but excellent work. So is that a yay, nay, or abstention? Oh, I'm sorry. I said pass. Uh, abstention. I forget where I am. <laughs> abstention? Okay. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Brooks? Yes. Thank you. Uh, Madam Chair, with five yeas and one abstention. 
Thank you. Well, those numbers do indicate that the motion carries. So I want to thank everybody. Um, and uh, I look forward to our being able to see this annual plan come to fruition. Um, I want to ask, because we can't really talk anymore, because there's nothing else on the agenda. I'm going to ask then if there's a final motion that would be non-debatable. Motion, motion to adjourn. Oh, I saw her. I her. Ask, Mr. Richards, you moved to observe. clarification. Yes, please. No, I just wanted to make an apology if that was possible. I didn't know where it comes from. Uh, comments I made last meeting. Uh, I'm sorry. Is that a, I'm sorry. Is that a question? Yeah, for me? I, yeah. I wanted. To, I, I didn't know where to put it, but I wanted to. I wanted to make an apology for some comments I made in last meeting, if that's per permitted. Um, but, I, I think that that is fine. Although I just want to make sure that it's not something on the agenda, and we're not going to be discussing. Just as long as you know that we won't respond. That's, that's perfectly fine. Yeah. Uh, at your yeah. At your pleasure, please. Yeah. Sure. I just want to make an apology. Commissioner uh, Jones said something when I mentioned about the new uh, executive. Uh, committee and then I I think I not a misspoke but I think I did say was there a meeting with this because it was just surprised people were nominated nobody spoke to it and so I just wanted to apologize for that I don't think you need a meeting because as I have mentioned you know I there wasn't a meeting it was just a phone call with me when when I was asked okay, about that's my call, enough. So. I don't think we, we need to hear again about the oh, okay. past thing an apology right. is accepted thank you okay. I'll go back then to my request. Is there a final motion that would be non-debatable? I heard somebody make it. You've second. had a motion by Marilyn Richards and a seconded by oh, uh, Jeff Jones. It was moved right. and seconded and there's no discussion on that. So I'll just ask, can we call the roll? Uh, yes, um, um, vice, uh, I'm sorry, Chairperson Richards. I mean, Chairperson Carney, geez. Yes to adjourn. Uh, Vice Chairperson Richards. Yes. C Commissioner Brooks. Yes. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Commissioner Cancel. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Tarbutton Springfield. Yes. Thank you. And I'd like Thanks to thank everybody. this. Great meeting. I'd like to thank this entire board for the smoothest meeting that we've had in at least two years. Yes. Thank you very yes. much. Well done, everyone. Thank you. Well very done, well done, everyone. Thank you, everybody who came.